What is up, guys? Dashing here for episode 138 of Community Universe Mode Live on Monday Night Raw, the go-home show for Over the Limit, which will be this Sunday, this Saturday, tomorrow in real time. And we're kicking things off tonight with Rex Carter, Xander Slate by his side, of course, taking on Shanaz Andoni. We've got the CMV Tag Team titles on the line this Sunday. Will be uh, Chet Taylor. And the real number one Bubba defending their belts against Rex Carter and Xander Slate, the hillbilly blue blood. <clears throat> Last week we saw Carter uh, defeat Chet Taylor in singles action after the match was over. Taylor actually tried to uh, mount a post-match attack, but Rex Carter saw it come and deflected the beatdown. Sent Chet Taylor running for the hills. Xander Slate, on the other hand, uh, lost a contest against Shanaz Andoni one-on-one. So we'll see how his partner Rex Carter fares tonight. Hello, boy. Hello, Mori. Hello, Voodoo. First time we're actually seeing these two enter together. It is just Rex Carter in action, though. Hail Billy Blue Blood earning the tag team title opportunity because Xander Slate got the uh, the championship match in that briefcase for placing in the top four of the inaugural Cyborg Invitation. Shows Rex Carter as his tag team partner. These two actually got a victory over the tag champs a couple weeks back and then Chet Taylor and Shanaz Andoni retaliated by getting a victory over uh, these two. And then of course we had those singles matches last week. Please chill board. Only two tag teams have that entrance besides these guys. Or actually it's just these guys and Zach Payne and Big Show so please chill. Chet Taylor not in the corner of his friend, his tag team partner, because later on tonight he'll be in singles action against Levi Marta. So Shanaz Andoni is out here alone against uh, his foes. Hopefully Hillbilly Blue Blood doesn't take that opportunity to, uh, you know, to get in, get the edge over Shanaz, try to beat him down in a handicapped situation. the real number one Bubba, the Punjabi playboy, Johnny Gat, Shanaz Andoni. What a match he and Xander Slate put on last week, though. An absolute clinic. Oh, and Xander Slate's boots are... What, what? What's going on outside the ring? His boots are in the ground. <clears throat> the outside of the ring is lava. Everybody run. Here we go. First matchup of the evening. Shanaz Andoni toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rex Carter. <clears throat> both the teams heading into over the limit with the same level of momentum. Of course, again, both teams have a victory over one another in tag team action. And then Shanaz beat Xander Slate while Rex Carter beat Chet Taylor. So this is the last opportunity before this Sunday that one of these teams can get the upper hand heading into the tag team title bout. Neither individual is going to back down here. <sighs> you guys, still on a lot of people's mind. Where is Sunshine and will he respond to the Undertaker's request for a rematch? at the third annual WrestleMania next month. Remember, The Undertaker returned at the Royal Rumble a couple weeks back and demanded that Sunshine give him a rematch at WrestleMania and that if he does not comply, he will hurt the girl. We don't know who the girl is, but Undertaker says he's got some woman, you know, uh, kidnapped. He said uh, she's not hurt now, but she will be if Sunshine does not respond. We still haven't seen Sunshine. Sunshine's been missing for three months now. Disappeared. Uh, a couple weeks before Vengeance. Gotta think that The Undertaker probably had something to do with it at this point. As the fans are chanting boring, they don't like what's going on in the ring right now. <sighs> the force that leg drop. 
That was quite a forceful leg drop by Rex Carter King, indeed. As Shanaz Andoni now goes for a pullback attack. Jawbreaker, though, by the Hillbilly. And our main event tonight, guys, is going to be a, a preview of what possibly could be our new WrestleMania main event as the American Justice squares off against the world champion, Justin Sane. Remember last week, the American Justice beat uh, Hayden. And actually, I got an update from the CMB doctors that Hayden did suffer bruised ribs, multiple bruised ribs in that matchup. Remember, Justice was targeting uh, Hayden's ribs the whole match, and then after the match was over, Hayden was getting wheeled out on a stretcher. Justice wasn't done yet, pushed Hayden off the stretcher, continued to attack him for Cyborg saved the day, <coughs> driving American Justice back. But earlier tonight, we had Hayden come out here and demand another matchup against the American Justice tomorrow night, real time, this Sunday at Over the Limit. Justice said no, and then Hayden went as far as to put his WrestleMania spot on the line. And that's when Justice would accept him for once again, pummeling Blade, injuring his ribs once more, and sending a message to Cyborg. So, uh, if American Justice manages to defeat Hayden this Sunday at Over the Limit, he will take his spot in the WrestleMania main event against Justin Sane for the world title. And remember, it could still turn into a triple threat if Levi Marta is able to defeat Justin Sane this Sunday in the main event. As ordered by Triple H, if Levi can defeat Sane, it will be made into a triple threat in the main event of WrestleMania for the world title. Obviously, Levi Marta added to the mix. Hovers for the pin out as Rex Carter. Shanaz Andoni in trouble. Gets out at one, though. <sighs> Hayden is not here tonight, though, obviously. Taking a couple days to rest before his collision with American Justice. Against a couple bruised ribs there for the 2017 Royal Rumble winner. A poll on the website asked if you think it was foolish of Hayden to uh, put his WrestleMania spot on the line. Four people said yes, three people said no. It's currently how it stands. So a lot of people, or the majority, only one more than no, but the majority think that Hayden does not have what it takes, especially with the bruised ribs, to defeat American Justice this Sunday. <clears throat> Pushed back by Shanaz there, catches Rex Carter with another pullback attack. Carter sees it coming though, jawbreaker, first matchup of the evening. Tonight we'll also see a six man over the top rope battle royal between the gauntlet competitors. Remember the gauntlet match that will take place at Over the Limit to find a number one contender for the hardcore championship at WrestleMania. And there's that nasty big boot by Rex Carter. Shanaz and Doni, that could be lights out, only a one count again. The, uh, the person who wins the over the top row battle royal though will gain the last spot in the gauntlet match this Sunday. Be given the privilege to enter last, you know, obviously that huge advantage. <clears throat> you don't know how a gauntlet match works. Two men will start. Once one guy's eliminated by pinfall or submission, another man will take his place. And that'll keep on going until all six men have entered. And there's that half Nelson neck breaker now by Shanaz. Only in one count though. Uh oh, Shanaz might want to be hyping up the crowd here. Clotheslining Rex Carter over the top rope right into Xander Slate. Slate not even trying to help his partner. And look at that. Shanaz is Shanaz up, but Carter, what a clothesline by the Hillbilly. And Rex keeps on exiting the ring and then just running right back in. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, there, he's trying to tear apart the announce table. What's up with everybody wanting to put their opponents through the announce table lately? Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Voodoo. Got a Hillbilly blue blah. That tag team tire, you feel me? Uh-oh, but Shanaz counters. Shanaz doesn't have a finisher, though. He wasted it on the suicide dive that backfired on him. But look at that, ramming Carter head first right off the freaking announce table. That's not going to feel too great as Zanderson keeps his distance. Doesn't want to get his partner disqualified here. What a back body drop on the outside of the ring. What's the ref at? <sighs> Six, but Rex Carter's going to break the count. I think he really wants to put Andoni through that announce table. Tim started something here, ladies and gentlemen. Tim LaFave, the hardcore champion, started a revolution on Raw. Everybody wants to be put through the announce table now. And speaking of Tim, later on tonight, we'll see uh, him tag with Jackson Jordan to take on Troy Voodoo and Omega Z of X Gen. Of course, remember, over the limit, hardcore title will be up for grabs as Tim defends against Omega. And Jackson Jordan will defend the United States Championship against Troy Voodoo. Both men get back into the ring at the same time. Shanaz gets caught off guard here by Rex, who hits a nasty single knee gut buster. Covers for the pin. One. Only a one count, though. <clears throat> and 
Carter. What the hell is he looking for here? Turning Shanaz around in the corner. Irish whip. Then real number one Bubba remounts off the ropes. Small package by Andoni looking to steal one. Carter counters though. Then to his own small package. Shanaz counters into a small package again. And there goes Rex countering. And now Shanaz counters. Ooh, that was very close there. Rex Carter luckily kicking out, stopping that uh, back and forth there in the small package. Rex Carter does have, I think, two finishers now in his pocket ready to go, but Shanaz and Adoni making sure he can't hit him. As Xander Slate watches on at support for his tag team partner. Nasty neck breaker by Carter. <laughs> Uh oh, Shanaz gonna Shanaz up, guys. One forearm. Let's get a second one. There it is. Ducks Rex Carter's clothesline attempt and then catches it with a nasty spine buster on the rebound. Let's get that pelvic thrust. There it is. Shanaz is Shanaz it up, folks. Rex Carter's in trouble in the corner now. He's stopping him and then just choke him out in the corner using the ropes for leverage. And now Rex Carter's the one in trouble as Xander Slate tells the fans to shut up. Stop, stop giving Shanaz all the support. Half Nelson Neckbreaker for a second time in this matchup now. And then Joni going to look for the win. One, two. Only a two count, though. Carter somehow still has the will to power out the very last millisecond. Another nasty neckbreaker. Rex Carter seems to be targeting Shanaz's neck. And now Carter not wasting any time. Realizes he's in trouble. Looking to finish things as he stalks Shanaz. And Doni looking for the Rexplex. Oh, but Shanaz counters. And now Shanaz and Andoni kicks to the midsection. A boot to the head by Andoni. That's got to be it. Rex Carter's got to be out of it. Drags away from the ropes. Doesn't want a rope break. Flips him over. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. And Shanaz and Andoni with a great victory over Rex Carter. Doing what Chet Taylor could not last week. Shanaz has now beaten both members of Hillbilly Blue Blood. Giving he and Taylor the upper hand. Heading into their title defense at over the limit. <clears throat> What's up, Dynamic? What a victory for Shanaz Andoni, though, was largely getting dominated in this contest. Here's the suicide dive he attempted he attempted early on in the match, but it got countered by uh, Rex, who rolled back in and gave him a nasty clothesline. Carter was looking to put Shanaz to the announce table at one point, but then Shanaz, Shanaz, though, got his comeback, hit his signature, countered Rex's uh, Rexplex attempt, and then hit a boot to the head to pick up the victory. <clears throat> and Shanaz and Andoni not going to make the same mistake that his partner did last week and try to attack Rex Carter post-match. Shanaz and Andoni obviously the GOAT of his team here, defeating both Carter and Xander Slate now. I think he got the pin in the tag match also a couple weeks back. But Shanaz is going to celebrate here, telling the ref to get the hell out of here. Let him celebrate in peace. And we will see Chet Taylor in action later on tonight. The other half of the tag champs, he'll be taking on Levi Marta. But right now, it's time for our six-man over-the-top rope battle royal. The six uh, men who will participate in the gauntlet match this Sunday <clears throat> for an opportunity to fight for the Hardcore Championship, the third annual WrestleMania next month. The winner of this gauntlet match will uh, be given the privilege of entering last in the gauntlet. Obviously, a huge opportunity. You'll be, you'll be nice and fresh. Whoever's in the ring will already have uh, competed and maybe, you know, multiple matches. <clears throat> Again, the man who wins this six-man over-the-top rope battle royal will be uh, given the last entrance into the gauntlet match this Sunday. You got guys in there like Randy Borton, Zach Payne, Ryan Ken, who have already been Hardcore Champion before. In fact, Ryan Ken, uh, the Hardcore Championship, was his first title here on the main roster. Randy Borton was also his first title, his last title also. Hasn't been champion since. Zach Payne, also a former Hardcore Champion. Ken, a Wolf, former two-time United States Champion. Zach Cage has yet to hold any type of gold here in CMB. Paul DeMine, we all know, a former four-time Tag Team Champion, has been chasing the Hardcore title for what seems like forever now, has had four separate opportunities to uh, capture the championship, but has always failed. And triple threats, singles matches, fatal four ways. Will tonight be his night? Will over the limit be his night? Will WrestleMania be his night? We'll find out. 
Of course, his, <clears throat> his brother, his tag team partner, Omega Z, will get a single shot at the championship uh, against Tim LaFave, one-on-one. -on -one. Extreme rules, it will be, obviously. Paul Devine and Omega Z have been parading around with the original CMB Tag Team titles the past couple of weeks after uh, winning them off of the Mexican Militia in Mexico some weeks back, or possibly in the future. We don't know when it took place. But uh, they've been parading around telling everybody from Renee Young to Justin Roberts to call them the real, quote-unquote, Tag Team Champions of CMV. Got to wonder how uh, Chet Taylor and Shanaz Andoni are you know, handling that, what they think about that. <clears throat> Or what Triple H or Cyborg think about that. <sighs> Gotta wonder if Zack Cage and Ryan Kett will work together in this battle royal. They are tag team partners. Perhaps we'll see them, you know, go at it in the gauntlet. Very possible. Zach Cage, or I don't know. We don't know when they're going to enter unless one of them wins. Then we'll know they're entering last for sure. But the gauntlet is completely a random other than who wins this gauntlet, uh, this battle royal, I should say. We could see Cage and Kent go at it, though, one-on-one -on -one in the gauntlet at some point. Why would you think it releases tomorrow, Tim? It's always been getting released in November. <laughs> Why in the hell would you think it releases tomorrow? In fact, you told me, you told us all that it releases in November. How could you forget, Tim? Rest in peace. <clears throat> Zach Cage. Will this finally be his moment? Win this matchup, enter last in the gauntlet match, win the gauntlet, head on to WrestleMania for a shot at the Hardcore Championship. This man's been here almost three years now. Has not had the privilege of uh, holding a championship in the modern day Hayden, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, I think it'll be Zach Cage's first WrestleMania because last year he did uh, compete, but it was in the tag team turmoil on the pre-show. So it would be his first uh, actual WrestleMania on the main card, too. <sighs> 2K16 comes out in like 10 days, 10, 11 days. Got to be cramming all these episodes in, you feel me? <sighs> like I said, though, today is the go-home show. Tomorrow will be over the limit. Sunday will be uh, the uh, start, the final month as we head towards WrestleMania. Then Wednesday will be the second show. Friday, the third show. Saturday, the fourth show, the go home show. And then Sunday will be the third annual WrestleMania and the season two finale before we head on over to 2K16. I'm pretty sure uh, 2K16 releases on that Tuesday, too. So, like, two days after the season two finale is when 2K16 releases. Rest in peace. <clears throat> Here comes Kendall Wolf now. Metal bat in hand as always. Two time United States champion. Been a while though. What did he lose the United States title? SummerSlam I'm pretty sure. So he's gone a while without some gold around his waist. <sighs> Please don't cry, Tim. It is wooden. It's just painted black. Why would you think it releases tomorrow, though, Tim? Who told you that? Someone lied to you. Who hurt you, Tim? Who hurt you? From Belfast, Northern Ireland. Ryan Kent. Again, Ryan Kent, Zach Payne, and Randy Borton, all former hardcore champions. In fact, Ryan Kent beat Randy Borton 
for the Hardcore Championship. Then Zach Payne beat Ryan Kent for the Hardcore Championship. So all three of those men have some history, especially Kent and Zach Payne, who have had a, an ancient rivalry since Ryan Kent really came to the main roster. They competed in ladder matches, false count anywhere matches, hardcore matches, Money in the Bank matches. Ryan Kent is a former Money in the Bank holder. Hello, Trouble. <clears throat> Hello, Lunatic Fringe. You gotta wonder who wants it more. If I had to guess, I'd probably say Paul Devon, who's gotta be desperate at this point. He's been chasing that championship for almost seven months. Desperation makes you dangerous. I'd say Paul Devon might want to watch out for him in this uh, Battle Royal. Randy Borton, though, hasn't been a champion since uh, before last year's WrestleMania. It's been a year since Borton has held the championship. That can make him desperate, too. The king of main event, the man with the wooden shovel now, just keeps going lower and lower. The man with the broken plastic spoon, Randy Borton. Up next will be that uh, singles match between Levi Martin, Chet Taylor. Then that tag team match will come our way as Tim LaFave. Shackles up with Jackson Jordan take on X Gen's Troy Voodoo and Omega Z, our main event again. American Justice collides with Justin Sane. As I'm sure Hayden is at home watching, bruised ribs and all, getting ready for that collision against AJ this Sunday. Ooh, that weird audio uh, blurb right there. What that was. <laughs> I don't know how you get lower than a, a broken plastic spoon. What's lower than that? Randy Borton, the man with the... I don't know. The man with the hands, I guess. Nothing would be the absolute lowest that Randy Borton can get to. Randy Borton, the man with nothing. And here comes Paul Devine with that CMV Tag Team Championship in hand. He and Omega Z have dubbed themselves the real CMV Tag Team Champions, telling everyone from Justin Roberts to Renee Young to call them that. That everybody else, including Shanaz, Adonia, and Chet Taylor, are just interim Tag Team Champions. Even they were interim Tag Team Champions. Because those are the real belts. Remember, Mexican Militia way back when took those championships with them when they left CMD. Action finally got them back some weeks ago, defeating them in Mexico. What were Action doing in Mexico? Don't ask me. The man with the peg leg. Paul Devine, if he can win this matchup, get the last entrance into the gauntlet match, win the gauntlet. And then defeat whoever the hardcore champion may be at WrestleMania. Could be holding double titles, though, and really that one. Who knows if that actually counts? We've got to wait to hear from Cyborg or Triple H on this matter. Could end up being Paul Devine versus Omega Z at WrestleMania. What a match that would be. Definitely have to get through a lot for that match to be set in stone, though. Have to see Omega win. We have to see Devine win. <clears throat> so here we go. Six men over the top rope. Battle Royal, and Zach Payne is the first man in trouble as Paul Devine. He's looking to eliminate him. Oh, my God. And there goes Zach Payne. Zach Payne immediately chucked over the top by Paul Devine. Probably one of the favorites in this matchup. Already eliminated. Now, there goes Zach Cage at the hands of Randy Borton. Zach Payne and Zach Cage, both the Zachs, eliminated within 30 seconds of this matchup starting. And now Kent in trouble. Paul Devine looking to make a second elimination. But uh, Kent gets saved there by Kendall Wolf. As Kendall now looks to eliminate Paul Devine. What's this? The Marine Master by Ryan Kent on Randy Borton. So now we got Ryan Kent, Randy Borton, Paul Devine, and Kendall Wolf left in the six man over the top rope battle royal. Both the Zacks eliminated within 30 seconds of each other. 
<clears throat> and now he might be saying goodbye to Paul Devine as Randy Borton's got him teetering. And there goes Paul Devine, eliminated by Randy Borton. And Borton has no time to talk as Ryan Kent tosses him into the corner, catches him with a uh, Mishunoku driver. And Paul Devine does not like what just happened as he makes his way to the back. Then there were three folks, Randy Borton, Ryan Kent, and Kendall Wolf. the final three. One of these men will be entering last in the gauntlet match this Sunday, a chance to compete for a hardcore title at WrestleMania on the line. Kendall Wolf cocking up that fist, knocking Randy Borton flat on the canvas. <sighs> Paul Devine eliminating Zach Payne with like five seconds into this match. Randy Borton eliminated Zach Payne, or Zach Cage, I should say, my bad. Like 10 seconds in the match. Then Borton just eliminated Paul Devine, and now he might be saying goodbye to Kendall Wolf as Ken and Borton work together, and there goes Kendall Wolf eliminated. And then there were two ladies and gentlemen. It's down to Randy Borton and Ryan Kent for who will enter last in the gauntlet match. And Randy Borton about to push Ryan Kent out. Oh, Kendall Wolf just <laughs> phased into the steel steps, but Borton can't get the job done just yet. Now Kent going to take his turn, try to eliminate Borton. Randy Borton holding on for dear life. Can Ryan Kent get him out? No, Ryan Kent doesn't have what it takes either. Ryan Kent, Randy Borton left in the sixth man over the top rope. Battle Royal. Borton's making make three eliminations. The last one to eliminate Kendall Wolf. He did have Kent's uh, help, but he eliminated... Zach Cage and Paul Devine. Randy Borton going ham right now. The King of Raw. Front headlock by Ryan Kent. What's he going for here? What is this? Looks like a suplex. Stalling suplex by Kent. One of these men. Will get the advantage of entering last in the gauntlet match. As Kent now puts Borton in the corner. Uh oh, he's got him on the top rope. Randy Borton staring at the outside of the ring, but countered by Borton. Elbow to the side of the head, front headlock by Kent now, puts him in the corner. <laughs> oh, but now Kent's got him in trouble on the other side of the ring. Uh oh, Kent's got him, I think. No, Borton hangs on. The agility of Randy Borton. Look at that, pulling himself up over the top rope. Both these men refusing to go out without a fight. Randy Borton and Ryan Kemp, both men former hardcore champions, looking to get that championship back around their waist. Borton, hard Irish whip. Uh-oh, this could be it, guys. Kent on the bottom rope, hanging on. Randy Borton's got him. Can Borton kick him out? He's trying, but no, Kent refuses to go out. Randy Borton getting frustrated at this point. Doesn't know what he has to do to eliminate Ryan Ken. Irish Whip puts Randy Borton in the corner now. And now Ken is the man on offense trying to eliminate Randy. Kent loves the corner. Elbow to the side of the head by Randy Borton. Borton shaking off the cobwebs. He's not feeling it right now. <clears throat> And now Kent once again in trouble out in the ring apron. Borton just trying so hard to eliminate him. Ryan Kent just refuses, man. And again, Kent ducked over the top. Uh-oh. He's on the bottom rope. Randy Borton's got him. And there we go. Randy Borton eliminates Ryan Kent, ladies and gentlemen. And Borton gets the prestige advantage of entering last in the gauntlet match. He will be nice and fresh. His opponent will have already competed. Huge opportunity for the King of Main Event. And Randy Borton takes one step closer to competing at WrestleMania for the Hardcore Championship. Wow, Tim just completely overlooking Omega Z. Rest in peace. Randy Borton gets to enter last in the gauntlet match. Doesn't uh, completely, you know, confirm that he will win it. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see who the hardcore champion will be come WrestleMania also as Tim LaFave defends against Omega Z. Right now it's time for some more singles action as Levi Marta takes on one half of the CMV Tag Team Champions. Chet Taylor are the interim 
CMV Tag Team Champions, as X-Gen would say. I don't know. There's no countouts. And an Extreme Rules match, Tim. I don't know if Tim can get it done. Juan a Juan, when there's no rules against Omega Z, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll see them in action against one other later on tonight in tag action. Tim teams with Jackson to take on Troy and uh, Omega. Now here comes Levi Marta. Levi Marta has a huge matchup against Justin Sane this Sunday in the main event over the limit. If he can defeat Justin Sane, the main event at WrestleMania will be changed to a triple threat. Levi Marta will be added to the mix. Once again, though, remember, if American Justice can defeat Hayden, then Justice will take his place against Justin Sane. Could end up being Levi Marta versus American Justice versus Justin Sane. Could end up being Justin, uh, American Justice versus Justin Sane. Could end up being Hayden versus Levi Marta versus Justin Sane. So many opportunities. We'll just have to wait and see. This Sunday, guys, we'll have our final WrestleMania match set in stone. Levi Marta, of course, uh, getting that opportunity by barging into Triple H's office a couple weeks ago and demanding a shot at the world title. Triple H said, I don't think so. First of all, I'll never barge into my office like that again. And second of all, I'll tell you what, Justin Sane needs a match so you can you can face my over the limit. It will be non-title. If you can beat him, I'll make it a triple threat at WrestleMania. Levi Marta didn't get you know fully what he wanted, but it's good enough. He'll take it. Half the reason that uh, Levi Marta really got that opportunity is because he's towing around big old Bill Cipher with him everywhere. Apparently trying to unlock some other dimension, bring in his, uh, his buddies. Who knows what's going on? Kendall Wolf's trying to stop him. It's just a confusing situation. We don't know what's going on between those three. Here comes Chet Taylor, though, who earlier on tonight watched as his partner Shanaz Andoni defeated Rex Carter. Now it's time for Chet to get him and his partner some momentum. Chet will defend that title against Hillbilly Blue Blood this Sunday. Taylor a little bit overzealous, a little bit angry. Lost his head last week after uh, being defeated by Rex Carter. Tried to mount a post-match beatdown. Carter saw it coming, though. Chucked Rex Carter out of the ring like a sack of dirty laundry. Let's hope uh, Chet Taylor doesn't let his... Uh, Head explode again tonight against someone like Levi Marta. He might lose a couple of limbs. <sighs> Marta definitely, uh, you could say, needs this more as he takes on Justin Sane this Sunday. Levi Marta already really heading into over the limit with the upper hand over Sane, though, after winning that tag match a couple weeks back, pinning Troy Voodoo, who uh, was teaming with Justin Sane. And Levi Marta kicks things off with a nasty head scissors on Taylor. Nobody wants to give an inch in this. Back to the collar and elbow, countered by Levi Marta. Now has a hold of Chet's arm. Now Taylor counters, has a hold of Levi's arm. <clears throat> Up next, we'll see that tag team matchup. Tim LaFave and Jackson Jordan take on X-Gen's Troy Voodoo and Omega Z. And then we've got Cole Savage in action, taking on Paul Anderson. Anderson's first matchup back on Raw in like six months. He's been tearing it up on main event the past couple weeks, undefeated since his return. Well, Cole Savage put a stop to that tonight. And then our main event, American Justice and Justin insane mano a mano in the ring. As Chet Taylor hits a nice flashback, now dragging Marta away from the ropes. Going <clears> to <throat> circle around his body here, stomping on every single exposed limb, the legs, the arm, the chest, the head. And he hits him with an impressive combination of kicks. Rake of the eyes by Levi Marta. The dirty heel tactics coming into play. Chet Taylor not exactly a baby face himself, though. Nice belly to belly, countering the pullback attack. And now, once again, going to make sure uh, Levi Marta can't get a rope break. Dragging him away from the ropes again. Going to circle around his body, targeting all of his limbs. Levi Marta is already in trouble here. Chet Taylor is taking it to him. Got to think that Justin Sane's probably... <clears throat> Backstage checking this one out. Last week, Justin Sane came out to the ring and uh, pretty much told Levi Marta that he didn't stand a chance at over the limit. Nobody stands a chance. He's the most dominant and Tom WrestleMania will be the longest reigning world champion of all time. I think he might have the most title defenses as world champion, or at least he's tied with Hayden. 
Because Hayden defended at Vengeance. He defended at um, the Royal Rumble. He defended at Over the Limit. He defended at WrestleMania. So yeah, he has four title defenses. Justin Sane also has four title defenses. So Justin Sane also now tied with Hayden for most championship defenses. And Bison, of course. That good old Intercontinental title reign. But we're talking about world title reigns. World title defenses, I mean. My bad. <clears throat> Flashback by Shet Taylor now. Takes Marta down. Couple stomps to the chest. Knife edge chop. Going for a pendulum backbreaker. Knee right to the spine. Broken him in half. Marta now drags Chet to the middle of the ring. Knee, nasty knee. Right to the ribs. And another one. Might be trying to break a couple of Chet Taylor's ribs. Put him on the uh, shelf with Hayden. <sighs> now out of the corner. Catches Taylor with a nasty wheelbarrow suplex. Troy Voodoo, you're no bison. Come on. Troy Voodoo's no bison. Rest in peace. Uh-oh. Chet Taylor throws Marta overhead. Vintage gut Chet as he drives both of his knees right into the midsection of Levi Marta. But he can't make it to the pin. Gas tank on empty. That cardio coming back to bite him. Still going to make it to the cover a little bit late. Only a one count. Has to be expected. But now Levi Marta in trouble. <sighs> Levi Marta really cannot afford this loss against Chet Taylor tonight. Front headlock by Taylor. Uh-oh, Chet might be looking to do what his uh, tag team partner Shanaz couldn't earlier. Hit a suicide dive and didn't go for it. He changed his mind. Marta counters back body drop and then just stares at Taylor. Uh-oh, brings him in through the ropes. Couple forearms to the spine. Double knee is going to finish that off. Oof. <sighs> Levi Marta focusing heavily on the torso of Chet Taylor in this matchup. Goes for the panel. Only barely a one count there. Jeez. <sighs> Front head locked by one half of the tag champs. Chet Taylor going to try that suicide dive again, perhaps. No, just goes for uh, Irish whip. Uh-oh, small package by Levi Marta looking to steal it. One, two, only a two count. One, two, only a two count. One, two. Two, ooh, 2.99999 for Levi Marta there. Shades of Rex Carter, uh, <laughs> Shanaz Andoni earlier tonight with the back and forth small package. Look at that. Chet just falling into the cover after a flashback. Only a one count though. <clears throat> Both men's gas tanks on empty. Chet Taylor's really been in control of the better part of this contest, surprisingly. What is Taylor going for now? Ooh, just hanging Marta up on the top rope of the suplex. God damn. And now Chet Taylor going to try to make it to the top rope for Levi Marta can get back to his feet. Oh, but he can't. Marta might get up before him. He does. Chet Taylor, will he take a leap of faith? No, look at that. Marta pulls down the ropes, causing Chet Taylor to plummet to the canvas. And what a clothesline by Levi Marta. Now going to lock in a triangle hold. Uh-oh. Chet Taylor in big time trouble. Referee in perfect position. Will Chet Taylor tap out, hyperextend the arm, legs wrapped around the throat, but no, Chet Taylor gets out of it. The swing blade, you mean the sling blade? Tim, please chill. Another flashback. And now Levi Marta looking for his comeback, double forearms, gonna get it a second time. And then Chet Taylor runs right into the Oklahoma Stampede. Levi Marta on fire, he's hyped up, he's ready to go. Just gonna cover for the pin though. One, two, only a two count. Chet Taylor refuses to go down to that. Uh oh, but Marta sizing Taylor up for the pump handle neck break. Marta just broken Chet Taylor's neck. One, two, no! Oh! Chet Taylor somehow finds the will to power out. Now both men have finishers. This matchup is getting good, but wait a minute. Levi Marta with a clothesline sending Taylor down to the outside of the ring shades of his mentor Sunshine as Levi Marta goes for the Spaceman Plancha. <sighs> and now referee starting to count. Chet Taylor somehow finding his balance, able to counter into a Russian leg sweep. And what a matchup between these two here on Monday Night Raw. 
Levi Amardo with a beautiful spaceman plancha just moments ago. But now Chet Taylor closing in, looking for his finisher. Countered by Amardo, slobber knocker. Man, just broken his jaw with that one. Levi Marta with a nasty knee to the ribs and then a forearm to the back of the head it looked like. Rope break for Chet Taylor though. The true hipster of CMB getting lucky there. And Chet Taylor looking to prove his worth. Shanaz and Odie has now beaten both Rex Carter and Xander Slate. Rex Carter couldn't get the, or I should say uh, Chet Taylor couldn't get the job done against Rex Carter last week though. And now both men just going for pin after pin after pin after every single move. We're at that point in the matchup where both these men's gas tanks aren't empty. They've given it their all. Back and forth it's been. Who's going to walk away with the victory, though? <laughs> Chet Taylor, Luthes Press. You can see that Taylor's getting agitated here, getting desperate. Double boot stomp to follow that up. I don't know why Taylor's not using his finisher. I'm pretty sure he still has it. Unless Marta countered it at some point. I don't think he did, though. <sighs> this could be big. Counter by Taylor, Russian leg sweep. Look at that, Taylor grabbing a handful of what little hair Levi Marta has, whipping him into the canvas now, set him up for the gentrification, kick to the midsection, double underhook driver inbound, he likes to call this gentrification as he struggles to get Marta up, then drives the neck first, right down into the mat. Immediately hooks the leg. One, two, three, and Chet Taylor with a monumental victory over Levi Marta here tonight. Not great for Levi Marta, great for Chet Taylor though. What a matchup, and what a victory for one half of the CMB Tag Team Champions. Chet Taylor stepping up his game tonight. A lot of highlights in this matchup. The gentrification just too much for Levi Marta to handle, though. Put the lights out. Got the true hipster of CMV, the three count. Very back and forth, though. Levi Marta had this match won multiple times. Unfortunately, he was his finisher on the suicide dive. Looking to deal some serious damage to Chet that came back to bite him. A little bit later, got hit with this gentrification. And that's it. <sighs> Great victory for Chet Taylor, guys. I'm sure Justin Saints backstage watching that one with a big Chet smile Taylor. on his face. Justin saying again, probably watching backstage, happy about that outcome as he prepares to fight American Justice later on tonight in the main event. Right now, it's time for some tag team action as the champions take on the contenders. Tim LaFave, the hardcore champion, will defend against Omega Z this Sunday. Jackson Jordan, the United States champ, will defend against Troy Voodoo this Sunday. Last week in six-man tag action, X-Gen, Troy Voodoo, Omega Z, and Paul Devine uh, defeated Jackson Jordan, Cajun Kent, perhaps the Introduction of Tim LaFave, though, as Jackson's partner will get the job done here. Voodoo's had it out for not only Jackson Jordan, but also Zach Cage these past couple of weeks. The whole thing started between Voodoo and uh, Jackson at the top of the month when uh, Voodoo attacked Cage backstage, then took his place against Jackson Jordan, defeated Jordan, only becoming the second man ever to defeat Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, Justin Sane's the other man. And then uh, the following week, it was a singles match between Zach Cage and Jackson Jordan, which Jackson won after the match was over. Zach, uh, Zach Cage was attacked by Troy Voodoo. Jackson Jordan came to the save, though, drove Troy Voodoo away, clotheslined him over the top rope, protecting Cage, effectively turning facey face, baby face Jackson Jordan now. That's not all the attacks that Troy Voodoo's uh, <laughs> done on Zach Cage. He also talked, attacked him a couple times on main event these past couple of weeks. Tim LaFave, uh, his history with X-Gen well documented. Him and 
Paul Devon competed multiple times, steel cage matches, extreme rules matches, singles matches. Paul Devon was one of the competitors in that Fatal 4 in which Tim won the belt, the Royal Rumble, a couple weeks ago when uh, Tim fought Omega Z one-on-one. -on -one. He brought home the victory by countout. Put uh, Omega Z through the table with a power bomb. Tried to break the count, but it was a little bit too late. Referee called it. Omega Z uh, not thinking that's very sportsmanlike. I'm sure that's bringing Paul Devine back. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you say you respect us, then you go and win by count out. Simple thing says a victory's a victory, though. This Sunday, there will be no count outs. There will be no rules. Anything goes as that championship will be on the line. So Tim's actually going to have to pin or submit Omega Z if he wants to retain that title. Head on to WrestleMania, defend against whoever wins the gauntlet. Time is two-faced. <laughs> time is two-faced. You know what? Fuck time. Time's a dick. Time, la favie. <clears throat> Still to come up next, we'll see Paul Anderson return to Monday Night Raw for the first time. About five, six months. Uh, returning at the Royal Rumble, but tearing up a main event. Undefeated so far. Well, Cole Savage put a stop to that tonight. Because here comes Jackson and Jordan now. From Houston, Texas. The United States champion, the real Jordan. <clears throat> Jackson and Jordan been the United States champion for a couple months now. Defeating Sunshine to win that belt. Has three title defenses under his belt. Or four. Three or four. Four. Three? Three. He defeated Jake Watson. He beat uh, Shanaz and then he beat American Justice at the Royal Rumble. Troy Voodoo probably his biggest challenge yet. Voodoo beat him one-on-one -on -one a couple weeks ago, so Jackson's got to be like, God damn, only the second man ever in my career to defeat me. Of course, we'll most likely and probably see Omega Z enter with the quote-unquote real CMV tag team title here, as Paul Devine did earlier tonight. They beat Mexico Militia in Mexico to win back the original CMV tag team titles, telling everyone else that they're just interim tag team champions, including hashtag trending worldwide and themselves even. He does. There it is. <laughs> the original CMB Tag Team title Omega belt around Omega Z's waist. The future, Troy. Imagine if all members of Action walk away with victories are over the limit. We'll have both Paul Devine and Omega Z holding the tag titles. Plus, Omega Z will be hardcore champion. Troy Voodoo will be United States champion. And Paul Devine will have a hardcore title shot at WrestleMania. I mean, Action will just be swimming in the gold. Uh, who wouldn't be scared of uh, Tim's tricep knee, though, am I right? Here we go, tag team action. Tim LaFave and Jackson Jordan take on Troy Voodoo uh, and Omega Z. It's going to be Tim and Voodoo kicking things off here. Immediately a butterfly DDT to uh, welcome Tim to the match. Voodoo, a former tag team champion in his own right, alongside uh, former partner Levi Marta. Failed to capture the United States title uh, a couple of months back, Survivor Series, when he took on Sunshine. Of course, failed to win the world title at the Royal Rumble off Justin Sane. Will this Sunday finally be his night to win some singles gold? And look at this, by Tim LaFave, the standing move salt. Great athleticism by the New York-born born brawler. New York-born brawler. 
Say that three times fast. Be chill. And what a German now. We know how much Tim loves his suplexes. Multiple different variations. Regular suplexes, Germans, gut wrenches, butterfly. That's really his entire moveset. Just different variations of suplexes. Uh oh, but wait a minute. Tim LeFay about to get lost in the woods. He's some feet. And Omega C just begging for that tag. Troy Voodoo going to uh, grant him the opportunity to enter this matchup. Now a little bit of a preview of things to come this Sunday. As Tim LeFay will defend the hardcore belt against Omega Z. Front headlock. Tim LeFay just chucking Omega Z up into the air. Like a sack of dirty laundry. And now just multiple punch overhand punches. Here comes that butterfly suplex. And then there's the German. Tim Lefebvre is all over x right now. Trying to make uh, x humble with these camel clutches. Rope break. Oh, wait a minute. Tim Lefebvre with the FDNY slam there. That came out of nowhere. I'm like, he just ran right into that. I didn't see that coming. I didn't realize it was a signature until like he had him up over his shoulders and Tim wasted no time as he goes for the Cody Island Cyclone now. A shade of things to come perhaps at over the limit and just six nights time flips him over, hooks the leg. One, two, only a two count. Omega Z uh, not very damaged just yet. That Coney Island Cyclone definitely uh, might have worn him down just a little bit. Tag out to Troy Voodoo. Omega Z realizing he's not feeling too well right now. <sighs> European uppercut. Tim Lefebvre now dragging Troy Voodoo away from his corner for a nice stalling suplex. Doesn't float over for the pin just yet. Oh, but he goes into the pin anyhow. It's weird. Not even a Juan count, though, for the hardcore champ. Jackson Jordan's not even been tagged in yet, guys. Tim LeFave is just going ham right now. He's beating the crap out of both X-Gen members. Like, it's his day job. It's his night job, though. Please chill, Tim. He's got him. <sighs> Tim's a construction worker during the day, I imagine. I don't know. Tim plays World of Warcraft, and he's in a wheelchair during the day, apparently, according to uh, Rifted. Troy Voodoo now in control, going for a middle kick here, knocking Tim's teeth down his throat, and a second time. How about a third time? No, Voodoo's lifting Tim to his feet now. What's Troy Voodoo got for Tim? And Timmy is in trouble now. He's getting dominated by Voodoo. Kicking back the leg. Butterfly DDT. Good night, Tim LaFave. Might be a rope break, though. It should be a rope break. Oh, no. Tim almost got the rope break, and then he moved his hand. Foolish. Kicks out, luckily. Here comes another middle kick. John, Tim LeFay about to have John Cena's nose. I mean, he already looks enough like John Cena. Might as well have that nose, too. Uh-oh, here it comes. Pushes Tim back. When he turns around, bam, right to the temple. With the roundhouse. Busted wide open. Not going to sell, though. Tim LeFay, the champ. European, or European uppercuts, let's say. Forearm smash. Inverted. Atomic drop. Scoop slam to finish it off. And Tim is on fire right now. You bust him open. He tastes the blood. He's fired. He's fired up. And now Tim, what's he looking for here? Going for the FDNY slam a second time. This time on Voodoo, though. Coming for the pin. One, two. And Troy Voodoo was firmly in control, beating the crap out of Tim. But then Voodoo busted him open. It was like he opened up a goddamn demon in him or something. Oh, but Voodoo wasted no time. Kicks to the midsection, hooks the, le hooks the arms. Pedigree by Troy Voodoo. Flips him over, hooks the leg. One, oh, Jackson Jordan breaks it up just in time, though. I forgot Jackson Jordan was Tim's partner for a second because Jackson's not even been in the freaking match yet. Pedigree wasn't enough to get the job done thanks to Jordan, but there's another defeat. And now Voodoo looking to tag in his partner Omega Z here. One half of the true CMB Tag Team Champions, the real CMB Tag Team Champions. Tim desperately looking for that hot tag. Can he make it, though? Omega Z trying to stop him. And Omega Z just going to pick... Tim off at this point. One, two, three, and Omega Z got it. Jackson Jordan just watched as Omega Z pinned Tim. What was that all about? 
Let's check him out. Omega Z coming in, just picking up the scraps after Voodoo pretty much completely demolished him. Omega Z hits a dragon suplex, gets the finish. Jackson could have broken it up, but just watched. Tim LaFave pinned by his challenger this Sunday over the limit. Omega Z, thanks to Jackson Jordan, who might have just effectively turned heel again. I don't know. Or maybe he's he, maybe he was pissed that Tim wouldn't tag him in. He broke it up. He broke up the pedigree. Then he was just like, no, nah, to the dragon suplex. He's like, next time, next time. Look, he just watched. He could have broken that up. I think that Jackson Jordan might have been a little bit pissed at Tim for not tagging him in at all. Tim was trying to prove a point maybe to X-Gen, and it cost him in the long run. If Jackson Jordan didn't break up the pin, he could have easily. And both the challengers get some momentum for themselves. It might have been not smart on the part of Jackson Jordan, though, because now Voodoo got some momentum in his pocket heading into their title match this Sunday, but I don't know, guys. Not great for Tim being pinned by his challenger at Over the Limit. I guess that's what you get, Tim, for not working with your partners. <sighs> and now it is time for our co-main event of the evening, which we'll see Cole Savage, as always, flanked by either Christian or Mark Henry. Tonight it's Mark Henry taking on Paul Anderson, who returns to Raw for the first time in five, six months since returning at the Royal Rumble. Been tearing it up undefeated on main event, beating... Randy Borton, Kendall Wolf, and Paul Devine just last week. Mark is going to be in his corner. Of course, we got that six-man tag coming our way this Sunday. Cole Savage, Christian, and Mark Henry going to take on Marcantel, Ringo, and a partner of their choosing. But the question in everyone's mind is if Ringo will even be able to make it to over the limit. He's not here tonight thanks to an attack at the hands of his ally, uh, Marcantel, last week after Marcantel lost to Cole Savage in a singles match. Marcantel went on a rampage, attacked the referee and Ringo Max. Giving him bull hammers and then the claw holes. You know, effectively knocking Ringo Max out cold. Ringo not here tonight because of that. And now Marto might be looking at a three-on-one situation. If he can't find himself a partner, if Ringo doesn't get better. If Ringo even wants to tag with Mark Tell after that. I'm sure Cole Savage is happy about that dissension last week, though. <laughs> Cole Savage, as always, swaggering his way down the ramp and into the ring. Mark Henry doesn't fit in that car. That's why he has to walk out on his own for Mark Henry. Cole Savage, again, probably uh, loving the fact that Martell attacked Ringo last week. Setting up a possible three-on-one situation. I don't know if anybody else who could team with Mark Henry. It was looking to be a three-on-two situation, as is. I don't think anybody was going to tag with Mark Tell or Ringo. Nobody really likes those two. And now Marto's made his odds even worse after attacking his partner last week. Again, Paul Anderson, guys. First time back on Raw in five months, five, six months. Last time we saw him on Raw was around Survivor Series. Returning at the Royal Rumble. Been undefeated in singles action so far. Tearing up a main event. Time to see if Cole Savage can put a stop to that or Anderson can keep it up. Or if Anderson will keep it up. Former world champion, though, two time tag team champion. Anderson's got himself a match this Sunday over the limit against a mystery opponent. Nobody knows who it is. Someone returning, someone on the roster that we just don't know yet. Maybe an NXT superstar debut, we do not know. Paul Anderson doesn't even know. He's just been told, you got a match, get ready. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I remember that Survivor Series. That was the best. Team Kofi Kingston looking for a fight. Four of us is black and one of us is white. What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? Here we go. Referee going to ring the bell as Cole Savage and Paul Anderson tie up in the collar and elbow. Savage going to get the early advantage here with the waist lock. Takes Anderson down to the canvas. Keeps that waist lock cinched in. Mark Dell just has it out for Cole Savage, guys, for reasons unknown. Cole Savage doesn't even know why Mark Dell hates him so much. Mark Dell says that he just doesn't like Savage and Cyborg. Doesn't like the two of them. Wants to tear them down. Cause them pain. Cole Savage just like, nah, please chill. Like, I don't even know you. Snapmare by Savage. Transitions, transitions into a sleeper hold. Back to the collar and elbow now. Definitely a Kind of evenly matched here, these two. Both uh, very technical. Both of them have some nasty kicking finishers. Savage, of course, has the ice cold kick, which puts the boot right above the heart. Paul Anderson likes to utilize the super kick out of thin air, out of nowhere. Inverted atomic drop, not done yet. How about another one? Two for the price of one. And here's a vintage Anderson going for the Whirly Bird head scissors. Launches Savage right in the middle of the ring. Mark Henry and Mark Patel stalking the outside of the uh, the ring. Supportive there. Oh, well, Mark Henry's here in the support of Cole Savage. Mark Patel's just here to scout out Cole Savage. Pretty sure he doesn't give a damn about uh, Paul Anderson at all. Kicks the midsection, DDT. Pullback attack. Beautiful Hurricane Rana. Goes for an end to Gurry as a Savage looking for a uh, clothesline or something. Both men kind of botch there. There's a knife edge chop. Woo! Stiff right across the chest. And another Whirly Bird head scissors coming into play by the former World Heavyweight Champion. Up next be our main event of the evening as American Justice collides with World Champion Justin Sane. And then we got main event the show to come, so don't go anywhere. This Sunday, over the limit. Tomorrow in real time, Saturday. And then we get our final month on 2K15. The second annual, third annual WrestleMania, the end of season two. Before we head on over to uh, the beautiful looking 2K16, which gets me hard every time I think about it. And now Paul Anderson back, Savage up on the ropes. Oh, beautiful counter with that mule kick. Connects the boot right to the jaw. Now going to drag Savage away to the middle of the ring. Or kind of near the middle of the ring, away from the ropes. Leg drop to follow it up. <sighs> Maybe if you were on the site more, Voodoo, you'd know what was happening. All right? Ooh, what a jawbreaker. Staggeds. 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 Staggers. Savage back. Russian legs. So Anderson immediately starting to get back to his feet already, though. Ooh, goes for a forearm. Anderson's in about that life, and what an end to Gurry. Mark tells Happy, he's like, yeah, beat the shit out of him. Come on, Anderson. Meanwhile, Mark Henry's just thinking about the catering table backstage. Standing leg drop by Anderson. Oh, and look at that. Cole Savage turns right around into the vintage spine buster by Paul Anderson. Beautiful transition there. Savage did not see that coming. He turned around and he's like, wait a minute, what happened? Now an elbow drop to the lower spine. Come on, Savage is an old man. You can't, you can't just elbow drop him in the back like that. He's got back problems, all right? Wait a minute. Woo! That knife edge chopped across the chest. Snap suplex by Savage now, former two-time hardcore champion. Savage have a finisher? I thought Savage had a finisher there for a second. I'm be like, where the hell did he get that? Going to the top rope, gonna be stopped dead in his tracks by Anderson. No kick back by Savage from the top. Savage, you can't go that high. Savage from the top rope of the Sekton. Savage, you gotta be careful, man. You're too old for that kind of stuff. Break of the eyes by Paul Anderson, the dirty heel. Oh, the super kick, thought he was gonna come out of nowhere. Pullback attack. Will it pay off? It will into another beautiful Hurricane Rana. Oh, there it is! <laughs> Anderson just not playing around. Super kick out of nowhere. One, 
two, three, no, what? Cole Savage somehow powering out of the super kick out of nowhere. And now Savage going for a signature finisher or something. He tried to hit something there, but Anderson ain't about that life. How did Savage kick out of that super kick, though? <laughs> Wasn't even really 2.999. It's like 2.5. What is Savage doing here? Knee to the midsection. Climbs to the second turbo. Because Savage, what are you doing? Going up high tonight. Leap of faith by Cole Savage. Savage has to stop going up high tonight, man. He's too old for this. And what is Mark Intel doing? Mark Intel distracting the referee as Savage looking for the victory. What are you doing, Mark Intel? Get the hell out of here. Referee, eject him. Come on. I know Cole Savage is the nicest, nicest of guys, but what the hell? Savage keeping up the assault though. Not gonna let that uh not gonna let that slow him down. Here comes Mark Intel a second time though. Distracting the referee, costing Cole Savage a possible victory here against Paul Anderson. Referee's not gonna tolerate much more of that, guys. Mark Intel does that again. He's gonna get ejected. Meanwhile, nice calm good guy Henry is just standing idly by here in support of his his friend, his leader, Cole Savage. And Savage is all over Anderson now, guys. He's just beating him up against the ropes. Knees, punches, jabs. Back into the ring now. Beautiful drop kick by Savage. The way that Savage can go in that ring, guys, for his age. He's not that old. He's 40, 39, 40, I think he said one time. He's not that old, but the way that he moves around that ring is incredible. Especially tonight. He's gone off the top rope in the second row, and now busted open. Gonna have to get another quote-unquote thousand stitches as Anderson hits a nice DDT following a kick to the midsection. Coverage for the pin. One, two. Ooh, I thought that was gonna be it there for a second. He's putting those educated feet to good use. And now Anderson, thanks to Mark, still has a second opportunity in this matchup. Another spine buster. That could be it, guys. One, two. Three, and that is it. Paul Anderson remains undefeated since his return, taking down Cold Sav Stinks in large part to some distractions by Mark Intel here tonight. Two spy busters and a super. I don't know how Savage kicked out of the super kick, first of all. But then a second spy buster would eventually be enough to get the job done. And Cold Savage not be happy about Mark Intel's interference here in this contest. I'm sure Anderson will send a big Mark a uh, thank you card, though. There's the second spine bust that eventually finished things off here. And Anderson remains undefeated. Who's going to stop this guy? Look at that. Mark still actually going to celebrate with him. If Paul Anderson weren't busy with his mystery opponent this Sunday, maybe he could be Mark Till's tag partner. Mark Till is trying to get any edge he can at this point, though, knowing that he'll probably be heading into a handicap match, three on one at open limit. Thanks to his assault on Ringo Max last week. Great victory for Anderson, though. Still undefeated. Who's going to stop the returning uh, former world champion? Possibly whoever his opponent is at Over the Limit. We'll have to wait and see. Is it an NXT superstar, returning superstar, a man currently on the roster? We just don't know yet. Going to find out this Sunday, tomorrow, in real time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, episode 138 of Community Universe Mode dashing here over the limit this Sunday. WrestleMania next month, the Season 2 finale. It is main event time as the American Justice collides with Justin Sane. American Justice now knows he has a date with Hayden this Sunday. If he can defeat the 2017 Royal Rumble winner, he will take his place in the main event WrestleMania and the main event of WrestleMania against Justin Sane for the World Heavyweight title. And of course, we know Justin Sane will be going Juan a Juan Mano y Mano with Levi Marta. If Levi Marta can beat Justin Sane, the main event of WrestleMania will be turned into a triple threat with Marta being entered into the mix. All this coming to fruition because American Justice defeated Hayden last week on Raw. In the main event, no holds barred. What a grueling contest it was. Justice targeted the ribs the entire match. And then as Hayden was being reeled out on a stretcher post contest to the back to get checked on, American Justice continued the attack. 
chucked him off the stretcher, hit his ribs a couple more times. The doctors confirmed Hayden suffered some bruised ribs. Earlier tonight, Hayden came out, demanded another matchup against American Justice. Justice said no, forcing Hayden to put his WrestleMania spot on the line. Justice finally said he'll do it before attacking Hayden again, targeting those ribs. And a poll on the website asked if you think Hayden made a mistake challenging AJ to a match. And more people thought, yes, he did. Four to three on the poll. I think that Hayden was foolish to a challenge this man to put his WrestleMania opportunity on the line. Just insane. Gotta be arguably the most dominant world champion of all time in CMB history. Gonna be the longest reigning come WrestleMania. Gonna have the most title defenses come WrestleMania if he retains against whoever his opponent or opponents will be. We'll have to defend over the limit. Again, we'll be fighting Levi Marta. Marta suffering a loss to Chet Taylor earlier today. Gotta put a smile on Sane's face. But Sane cannot afford to suffer a loss to Justice here. I love how he just chucks the water bottle at a fan. That, the entrance is, is hilarious. They literally just throw the water bottle at a fan. Justin Sane doesn't give a shit, though. He's not worried about it. Sue him! Imagine that. Someone suing Justin Sane because he chucked a water bottle at them. Rest in peace. Justin Sane's career. He'll be Hulk Hogan's. We can't have people throwing water bottles at the fans! Jesus, Justin family show this is a Christian family show Justin saying <laughs> he's just talking to his friend BAM just looked at Justin saying saying's like yeah I don't really care And here we go, main event of a Monday Night Raw, episode 138 of Community Universe World as Justin Sane takes the early advantage, tossing American Justice around the ring. It's uh, pretty weird. Not the first time these two have collided, been a long time since they have. I think the first time, the last time they collided was uh, around when American Justice made his debut on episode of Main Event. These two actually uh, somewhat allies um, a couple months ago when uh, Sunshine disappeared. Justin Sane actually brought out American Justice as his replacement. Seemed to form some sort of, some sort of like alliance or something. That's going to go out the window here tonight as Justin Sane hits a beautiful clothesline bulldog combo. From out of the corner, there's an STO to retaliate for Justice, though. If Justin Sane, after the match, just came out and asked me for the bottle back, <laughs> he wants that water bottle, all right? He likes to recycle. Justin, uh, Justin Singh goes green. Face buster. I don't know if that's a face buster, King. I'm pretty sure it's a jumping complete shot. But now Justin Singh going to go for my favorite submission maneuver. Tucks uh, Justin's arm between his legs. Wrenches back on the jaw and the chin. Justice gets out of it, though. Not ready to tap just yet. STO. I'm sure it's not the last time we'll see an STO here from American Justice in this matchup. Yep, there it is, right there. About five seconds later. Oh, pinpoint elbow drop. And now AJ is firmly in control here over the world champion. Started off Justin Sane just going ham on. Uh, <clears throat> the man who placed second in the inaugural Cyborg Invitational. American Justice uh, got the briefcase with the United States title opportunity in it, but then lost to Jackson Jordan. 
at the Royal Rumble. He was the only man to defeat Troy Voodoo. Remember, Voodoo finished 8 and 1 to win the tournament. Ooh, what a shoulder jawbreaker, losing to Justin Sand at the Royal Rumble as well. The world title on the line. Now gonna. Oh, boy. Taking a roll up uh, Justin's body there. Getting a little bit kinky, just, Justin Sand there. Camel clutch type maneuver. Front head lock counter though into the Russian leg sweep. Middle kick now. Ooh, right to the nose. That was a great camera shot. Good night, American Justice. Somehow back to his feet. And there's Vintage Saint with the spike single arm GDT. AJ not happy, looking for his comeback. Gonna have to get Justin Saint in the quarter though if he wants to get it off. If he wants to get off. You feel me? Standing clothesline. American Justice is pissed right now. And a back elbow. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Ah, <laughs> come. And look at that, an STO by uh, Justin Sane showing AJ how it's done. Thug Nificent, let's call it. Of course. And Justice fueled by passion refuses to quit. Justice fueled by passion refuses to quit, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if he's fueled by passion as much as he is fueled by hatred for Hayden and everyone else on the CMB roster. Uh-oh, what's this? Justin Sane tying up Justice's arm. Gonna wrench back on the jaw for my favorite submission maneuver. American Justice might tap, guys. And he does! What is with Justin Sane tapping everyone out to that submission? My God, American Justice, guys, jobbing out to Justin Tapping off my favorite submission. What the hell? Justin Saint tapping everyone out with this goddamn submission lately. Gotta lower them sub stats. They're at zero though. I don't know how he's tapping people out so easily. Justice taps out, guys. My favorite submission. I'm sure Hayden's at home clutching his ribs, happy about this. Happy that Justice tapped like a little bitch. I'm sure Levi Mart is uh, somewhere backstage crying though. Bill Cipher. Holding him tightly. Here is your winner, Justin. <laughs> Saint. Justin Saint makes yet another CMB superstar humble as he celebrates his victory here over AJ. Getting some last-second momentum before this Sunday's Over the Limit pay-per-view event, where he will fight Justice or uh, Levi Marta, I should say. American Justice will be fighting Hayden. And as we close out Raw, we see the image of Justin Sane towering above the camera. <clears throat> Looking mighty strong. You gotta make Justin Sane look strong, alright? We still got main event, the show to come. <laughs> All right, first we're going to have a matchup that I thought of just a few moments ago. Jackson Jordan. Sane's not an overall 87. Sane's like an overall 96, I think. Let me check. Oh, he's an overall 86. Okay. Don't know how that is. Pretty sure it says differently on the thing. Where's Tim? There's Tim. It's because of momentum. Probably says 80 uh, or 96 on his profile. Alright, Jackson Jordan versus Tim LaFave. Then how about Hmm Hmm Some more singles action. <sighs> Who was it on Raw? Let's see. I'm pretty sure everyone was on Raw this episode. 
Xander Slade didn't compete, I guess. Uh, let's put Xander with Carter. Take on. Uh. Mm. I don't think everybody. It's a Sanders Slate who didn't compete on Raw, literally. Well, there's Markintel. I don't know about Markintel. It's not like a great match, though. Hmm. Who should Xander fight? Let's fight Randy Borton. Let's let's get a little of a throwback here. In the main event, we gotta feed someone else to Paul Anderson. Who should be fed to Paul Anderson in the main event? Of main event. Who should Paul Anderson make humble in the main event? Two votes for Payne for some reason. Didn't he already beat Payne? No, he didn't beat Payne yet. So, Zach Payne. Alright, Payne. I guess Payne it is. Borton's already in action, Tim. Please pay attention. He already beat that scrub wolf, Kenzel. Alright, Kenzel. It's like a mix. Kenzel and Kendra. Kenzel. That's your new name. Rest in peace. Alright, here we go. Episode 138 of Community Universe Mode. Quite the raw we just witnessed. Over the Limit is this Sunday, tomorrow, Saturday, in real time. We are kicking things off tonight with Jackson Jordan taking on Tim LaFave. Champion versus champion here on main event. <clears throat> the game will load sometime today. There we go. Tim LaFave requesting this matchup earlier this week after Jackson Jordan cost him that tag match. Remember, Omega Z pinned him after a dragon suplex. Jackson Jordan got in the ring, but then just stared at uh, Tim as he was pinned. He could have broke it up, had like a solid two seconds to break it up, could have easily done so. But decided not to. So Tim requested this matchup against Jackson Jordan. As both these men have some big time title defenses coming their way this Sunday. Of course, Tim defends against Omega. Jackson Jordan defends against Troy Voodoo. Jackson Jordan, who knows where he stands lately. Again, saving Zach Cage from an attack in the hands of uh, Troy Voodoo yet again a couple weeks ago on Raw. But then, like we said, just uh, I think I think emotions just got to Jackson Jordan on Raw because Tim refused to tag him in. Tim, solid 15 minutes, just decided to take out Action all by himself. Was actually doing fairly well until uh, Troy Voodoo just shut him down. Jackson, a little bit angry about that, decided to just cost him the match. Yes, it gives. Uh, Troy Voodoo some momentum heading into their title match at Over the Limit, but Jackson Jordan sending a message to, to Tim LaFay, don't fuck with me. Why are you guys talking about porn stars in the Twitch chat? Please chill. 
<laughs> James Storm signed with Pornhub. He's got that poor name. It'll work out. Tim LaFave again requesting this matchup, though. Not going to let that slide, Jackson. You think you are. You got to give the upper hand to Omega, though, regardless. No matter what happens here in this matchup, Omega did pin Tim clean in that tag match. Getting some revenge for the countout victory that Tim got a few weeks back on Raw. GG, Tim, are you okay tonight? You think Battlefront's coming out tomorrow? You're petting your controller. Talking about porn stars. I don't think you're okay, Tim. Please go to sleep. Tim LaFay was born a hero, Voodoo. Please understand. He's got to have that good guy music feel. Tim LaFay possibly become only the third man in Jackson Jordan's career to defeat Jordan. Jordan has been in CMB about seven, eight months now, with two losses on his record. Seemingly unstoppable as United States champion Troy Budula looking, looking like a heavy task for Jackson to get by this Sunday. Here we go, kicking off main event episode 138 of Community Verse Motors. Jackson, Jordan, and Tim LaFave go at it. Both men gearing up for their title defenses in just four nights' time. And look at Jordan's just fuck goddamn giving a giving a Tim LaFave a noogie here. Jesus, Jackson Jordan is mean. Just look at his face, dude. I don't want to be in the ring with that guy, especially with that knockout power in the fist of his. Tim LaFave uh, might be meeting it here tonight. To Back to the collar this. and elbow. Later on tonight here on Main Event, we'll see Xander Slate go one-on-one -on -one with his arch nemesis, Randy Borton, in the 10th installation of that series of matches. Main Event and Main Event, we'll see Paul Anderson try to keep up his undefeated streak since returning to CMB earlier this month. Takes on Zach Payne. Not making any money through YouTube. <laughs> I have too much copyrights, Voodoo. Please chill. <laughs> if I wanted to make money from YouTube, I'd have to silence all the videos. It'd just be me talking. You wouldn't hear any music, any of the commentators or anything. There's too much copyrights on all my videos. Beating 12 year olds? That's your favorite pastime activity, Kinslow? I'm not, I'm not surprised. Beating 12-year-olds how, though? I feel like when you say that, it could mean a couple things. Inverted suplex by Tim LaFave. And there's the Hurricane Rana, the agility by Jackson Jordan. Incredible strength, but zip around that ring like nobody's business. Very well-rounded. Yeah, beating off the 12-year-olds is what Kinslow meant to say there. What a soccer ball kick to the spine of... Tim LaFave. Now going to go for a DDT from a kneeling position. Tim in about that life, though. Near to the midsection. Irish whip by Jackson. Counters. Goes for a, uh, looks like he's going for Pierce's elbow on the corner, but Tim LaFave wasn't having any of it. Cut wrench suplex yet again. Here comes that elbow right to the eye of Jackson. Should be illegal there. Should be a disqualification. Chest bump mid-match showing good sportsmanship. Here comes Tim LaFay with the dreaded scoop slam. Jesus, Tim, take it easy on Jackson. You hit him with the scoop slam out of nowhere. Like, what? Larry, takedown. Now, Tim LaFay getting fired up here as he takes on Jackson Jordan, champion versus champion. Here comes the standing moonsault. Amazing athleticism on the part of Tim LaFay. Jackson Jordan not only takes down Tim LaFay, but also the referee with that botched wheel kick. Not a wheel kick. Kick. I don't know what it's exactly called. I think it's just something. Something or another kick. Something kick. That's what it's called. The something kick. 
I don't think Jackson Jordan has actually successfully hit that move. He always botches it. Just take it off his moveset. Stalling suplex by Timmy Boy now. I don't think Tim has the pin combo. That's why he never goes for uh, the pin after that. Oh, there he botches it again. It's like Randy Borton's super kick. Botch of the year, 2017. Jackson Jordan's uh, kick going to be a nomination. Uh-oh, Jackson going for his sig. Temple Fave says no way. Counters. Forearm to the lower spine. Counter by Jordan now. And a Russian leg sweep. And Tim has the upper hand as he might have just stolen a sig or possibly a fin from Jordan. German suplex. What's Tim looking for here? Tim LeFave going for the FDNY slam. Oh, no, it's the Coney Island Cyclone. What? <laughs> Tim LeFave not beating around the bush, guys. Looking to end Jackson. Quick flips over, hooks the leg. One, two. No, but Jackson Jordan's not done just yet. Tim LeFave get a little bit little bit overzealous. Might have cost himself right there. Should have tried to wear Jackson Jordan down a little bit before going for the finisher. And now Jordan has a second chance here in this match. Looking to make Tim humble as he locks in the camel clutch. Tim the ropes are right there. Can he make it? He can. Referee going to force the break as Timblefade gets to the bottom rope. And now Jackson Jordan going to show Timmy Boy how to hit a proper standing moonsault. And look for another one back to back. Beautiful. I love when he does that. And now Tim get a little bit angry here. Looking for his comeback. Looking to hype up these fans. Hype himself up. Gonna get it off though. Goes for the forearm. Jackson Jordan's not having it. It's a fig. It's a fig Newton, please. Float over neckbreaker now by the United States champion. Gonna lift Lefebvre to his feet. Going for the double underhook pile driver this time. He's gonna get it. Top of Tim's head. Gonna greet the canvas. And now look at the limp body of Tim LaFave just ragged on across the ring as now Jordan covers for the pin. One, two, only a two count, barely a two count for Jackson Jordan. But now Tim's in serious trouble as Jackson Jordan's going to look to cock up that fist. Here it comes, the hashtag. Jackson's getting ready for it. Don't get up, Tim. You're not going to like what you see. And there it is. Bust Tim wide open, hooks the leg. One, two, three. And Jackson Jordan walks out with the victory over Tim LaFave after a great back and forth matchup to kick off main event. Tim LaFave might have cost himself this victory though. Getting a little bit overzealous. Uh, not wearing Jackson Jordan down before he went for his uh, Coney Island Cyclone. That allowed Jackson Jordan to capitalize get himself back into the matchup and does that hashtag busts him wide open. He was busted open on Raw also. Gonna wanna get a couple stitches in that before this Sunday. No Omega Z is gonna be uh, looking at Target Z now. So I got something in my fucking eye again. I don't know what the hell it is. Please chill, get out of my eye. Jackson Jordan celebrating that victory, though. Hard-fought victory over Tim LaFave. Tim might be regretting requesting that matchup because now he just got busted open yet again. Thanks to Jackson Jordan. Now it's time to see Xander Slate with Rex Carter, but there's Tim LaFave taking on Randy Borton. Remember, Tim LaFave has a uh, uh, history with Xander and Borton, so might be getting a cutscene of some sort here. Supposed to be Xander with Rex taking on Borton. The uh, series of matches between these two just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Of course, they were allies for some time. Uh, late last month, though, Xander turned on Borton, attacking him after a tag team victory. Temple Fave was their protege. They were helping you know, mold him into the superstar that he is now. Since then, they've all gone their separate ways. Temple Fave looking to take over main event, though. He's not done just yet. He should be knocked out cold after that hashtag, but he's not having it. Kill the Rex. Please don't kill my tag team partners, Tim. I need him for this Sunday. We need to win those tag belts. You feel me? <laughs> Rex Lefave. That botch on the uh, nameplate, though. GG. 
production staff, come on. We're gonna miss you, Justin Roberts. Won't be the same without you on 2K16, but here comes Hillbilly Blue Blood. Will be Xander Slayton singles action taking on Randy Borton. These two getting ready for their tag team title opportunity this Sunday at Over the Limit against hashtag Trending Worldwide. Carter taking a loss to Shanaz and Doni earlier this week on Monday Night Raw, as did Xander Slayton the week prior. When Rex Carter looks nothing like Dave Turner besides their hair. Please chill, Voodoo. <clears throat> Last time Xander Slate and Randy Borton went at it one on one, Xander Slate did pick up the victory, but that's only after Randy Borton beat Slate about six or seven times in singles action. Kick and main event, though. The man who won that six man over the top rope battle royal. I'm Monday Night Raw to uh, get the last entrance into the gauntlet match this Sunday. Warren obviously has the advantage. Been gifted the last entrance in the gauntlet. His opponent, no matter who it will be, will already be worn out. Could have gone through five other matches before Warren came out. Four other matches, I should say. Got to wait and see, but... Warren, a former hardcore champion, looking to get there again. Looking to get to the grandest stage of them all fight either Tim LaFavre or Mega Z. Xander Slate is all baby oiled up. God damn, look at Randy Orton over there. He is glimmering. When they don't have the same face, when they're not the same size, when they don't have the same size boots, when they're not wearing the same color underwear, please chill, Voodoo. <laughs> Randy Borton backs into the corner, ready to get things on, or to get things going here. Against his rival, Xander Slate. Referee going to ring the bell, and here we go. Collar and elbow tie up to start things. That bell was really loud right there. Borton gets the early advantage, side headlock. Get a little bit of a noogie, and another noogie. Xander Slate does not like noogies, that is confirmed. He's had enough. Chuck's Borton into the corner. Going to catch him on the rebound with a nasty flapjack. Right at the start of the match, Borton hit with a massive move. That's not great. Xander Slate has the uh, support of Rex Carter in his corner here. Randy Borton's not going to care about that, though. Pain is dead, Echo. Rest in peace. Who knows where Pain is? <sighs> Back to the car now, but he doesn't like that I'm burying Zach Pain. <laughs> I'm not burying Pain, though. He buried himself, all right? Please chill. Young Blood, apparently that's Randy, Or Randy Borton's uh, nickname on commentary. Gets a hold of Xander's arm, trying to rip it out of its socket. Damn, Borton, please chill. I know Xander Slate attacked you, like, after your tag victory and then again before your singles match, but goddamn, he doesn't deserve that. He needs that arm. Xander with the great counter out of the corner. Driving Borton face first in the mat. Back elbow saves Borton though. Nice counter. What a slap by Xander. Showing zero respect. What an, uh, what an expect him to do though anyway. Irish whip by Slate. Borton rebounds off the ropes. Another flapjack landed. Perfectly. Now Xander going to prop Borton up. Double axe handle. In the back and Borton cannot uh, afford to get an injury here. Really you know, put on an a clinic here against Xander Slate with his gauntlet match looming in just four days' time. Ooh, double boots on. We'll see another gauntlet participant in action in the main event. A main event up next. Zach Payne takes on Paul, Ander Paul Anderson. What's going on here? Wait a minute. It's Tim Le Tim's distracting Borton. Tim's distracting Borton. What? And Xander Slate attacks Borton, taking advantage of the distraction. What the hell? Oh, and what is happening now? What's happening? Someone, Borton's in the crowd. I think Cyborg moment. Cyborg moment, guys. <laughs> Here comes Borton from the crowd. Borton from the crowd. Cyborg moment, 450. Over the barricade. Come on, Borton, do it. <laughs> 450 over the barricade. <laughs> yes. 
And Tim LeFay just got taken down via a super kick by Slate. And now Tim doesn't know what's going on. Oh, look at this. <laughs> and this matchup continues as Xander Slate battles Randy Borton live on main event. Oh, looking to, looking to make Randy Borton humble. The referee's at a count of six, though, guys. Xander Slate's going to let go immediately. He doesn't want to lose by counter and get a draw by count out. So Tim LeFave, guys, distracts Randy Borton, allowing Xander Slate to capitalize from behind and take advantage. Is Tim LeFave, uh, you know, saying who he's siding with here in this battle? I think that's what you can take away from that, that Tim LeFave has decided to, uh, you know, stick with Xander Slate as an ally rather than Randy Borton as Slate now hits a nasty pump handle slam. Now Xander going to place Borton in the corner in the driver's seat now, thanks to Tim LaFave. Uh-oh, going to go for the heart stopper. Scoop slam to the king of main event. Climbing to the second turnbuckle. Going to drive that bare elbow right into the heart of the man with the broken plastic spoon. Covers one, two, only a two count. Though. Borto, Borto not done just yet. And there's another slap showing disrespect. I think Xander just went for his finisher. Counter by Borton though. Yes he did because there's the super kick now. Hooks the leg. One, two. There no, Xander Slate kicks out. Not about to go down that easily. And what a matchup between these two here on main event. Episode 138 of Community Universe. Well, thanks to a distraction by Tim LeFave. Randy Borton was attacked from behind by Xander Slate. But Borton's not going now without a fight here. Elbow to the back of the head. And then Borton somehow fades into the uh, crowd. <laughs> Had to run back over the barricade. No <sighs> one wants to sit out spine buster. Rex Carter watching on from ringside in support of his tag team partner, Xander Slate. Here comes the sit out suplex slam. Rick of the eyes. Typical dirty heel Xander Slate strutting his stuff across the ring. I feel a burp coming on. <clears throat> but it won't come out. It's irritating. <clears throat> Lutez press followed by some heavy shots. Going to cover for the pin now. One using the hover fist. <laughs> Doesn't want to touch Borton's face. Got cooties on it. And Borton in a world of hurt right now. Gas tank completely on MC. Got Xander Slate lent up against the rope, so back body drop puts Borton on the ring apron. Borton trying to get back in. Xander not going to allow it, though. Good guy, Xander. <laughs> Dinner is for the week. <laughs> Lead in the midsection by Randy Borton. You missed the cyborg moment, Kinzel. You'll have to go back and watch it later. <laughs> and now Borton just relentlessly stomping out of the chest of Xander. Might have a sign in his pocket. No. Counter by Slate into the Russian leg sweep. Randy Borton has had the odd stack against him here tonight. Not only is Rex Carter ringside for Slate, but also he had the interference by Tim LaFave. Uh-oh, what's Xander going for here? The Samoan drop fall away. Slam, long way down for Randy Borton. Xander Slate is a big guy. And now Slate going to go for the Slate Walk Slam. That could be enough to put the lights out for the King of Main Event. Covers. One, two, no, only a two count. Borto just refuses to stay down, ladies and gentlemen. The Borton will not lose to Xander Slate for a second time. And another T-Bone suplex. Borton just throwing out these T-Bone suplexes like they're free. Springboard uh, goes for a springboard body splash. Kind of botches it. Connected with his boots. And look at Slate's going to get up first. That's when you know you truly botched horribly when your opponent gets up first. Uh-oh, Slate going for his finisher again and again. Borton counters, goes to the super kick. Slate sidesteps it, though. What a transition between those two. Are, uh, a back and forth, and now a back suplex by Borton. Only a, I think it might have been a rope break or something, or a very fast count there. Only one, not even barely one. And now Borton kicks the leg, puts Xander into a kneeling position to snap DDT. And Xander Slate could be out of folks, but Borton can't get to the pin. He's out of stamina. This has been a grueling contest, as always. Every time these two are in the ring together, it is an instant classic. Borton flips Slate over. One, a little bit too late, though, getting the pin. Only a one count. 
But Bort not wasting any time. He goes for the Borto, and that's got to be it. Hooks the leg immediately. One, two, three, and what a match of the as always. But Randy Borton, despite the interference by Simul Fave, walks out the victor. Wasting no time hitting that Borto, and wasn't about to play around and wait for the right moment. He was just like, nope, let me get this done real quick. And Randy Borton picks up yet some more momentum heading towards the gauntlet match this Sunday. An opportunity to compete at the third annual WrestleMania for the Hardcore Championship on the line. Nice shot of the ref's ass right there. Let's hope Tim Lefebvre doesn't come back out and attack Borton again. Rest in peace. Put him out in the, the crowd. Very back and forth, great matchup between the two. There's the slight walk slam, not enough to get the job done for two-time world champion, though. Then Slate would go for his finisher counter by Borton. Borton went for the super kick counter by Slate, eventually ending up in the Porto end to finish things off. Tim Lefebvre, unsure of where his allegiance lies between this uh, bad blood feud between Xander Slate and Randy Borton, his protege, or his, uh, his mentor, he's their protege. Great victory for Borton, nonetheless, here on main event, looking strong as we head towards that gauntlet match just four nights time. Now it's time for our Main event and main event. You're going to see Zach Payne, Jake Watson in his corner as always take on Paul Anderson, the undefeated superstar since returning in the Royal Rumble. Randy Borton, Ken Wolf, Paul Devine. Earlier this week on Monday Night Raw defeated Cole Savage. Will Zach Payne finally be the one to put a stop to Anderson's reign of terror here tonight? Whew, it is cold. It is a brisk winter's night. <sighs> it's not even winter yet, though, is it? Rip dashing. Pretty sure it's still spring. Is it spring? It's winter, isn't it? No, it's spring. Rest in peace. I don't even know. <clears throat> of course, we know Paul Anderson has a date with a mystery competitor this Sunday at Over the Limit. Could be an NXT superstar debut, maybe a returning superstar. A man currently on the roster, you just don't know yet. We'll wait and see. Whoever it will be definitely has a task in front of them. Zach May, another participant in the gauntlet match. Was uh, eliminated within like five seconds on Raw in that Battle Royal by Paul Devine. Tossed out immediately. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, episode 138, Community Universe Mode, main event, main event. What an episode it's been so far. Time to finish things off. Zach Payne and Paul Anderson going to go at it. Forgot Paul Anderson didn't enter yet. Rest in peace. Does it remind anybody else? Does this song remind them of the Power Rangers for some reason? I don't know why. The song just reminds me of like a Power Rangers theme song or something. Makes me want to watch Power Rangers rip. Paul Anderson is a Power Ranger confirmed. He's a Red Ranger. His tights are red. It's conspiracy, I tell you.
Hunter down. Now here we go with the bit of it, a bit of it. Zach Perry, Paul Anderson, mano e mano. Referee gonna ring the bell, kick things off with collar and elbow. Thought neither guy was about to get the advantage. Paul takes the late one though. Waist lock takes him down to the canvas. The bad guy. <laughs> Oh, what a wrestling slam by Payne. Transitions to a side headlock as his protege Jake Watson. Jake Watson watches from ringside. Dr Jake Watson. Jake Watson. Please chill, Dash. You know, I'm a little bit tired, right? Please, please leave me alone. Jake Watson. Watson's from ringside. Back to the collar and elbow. Now Anderson. Going to take the waist lock. Snapmare by Payne, though, into a sleeper hold. Beautifully countered. And now just lifts Anderson up. Oh no, Anderson counters. The hip toss there. He gets out of trouble there. Did you play outside with Zach, Tim? I feel like. Drop kick by Paul. Puts Payne down to the outside of the ring. And here comes Anderson. Oh, gets caught with some kicks to the dick, though. Now a back elbow. And then a tornado DDT. What a combo by the former hardcore champion in his own right. Oh, and now Payne going to be ran to that steel post for his troubles. Referee to count of four, guys. And Payne going to get some retaliation. Ramon Anderson into the steel post. Anderson's not having it, though. Kick to the midsection. Count of five. And Anderson going to get back in the ring. Zach Payne a little bit woozy here. Look at this. Paul going to take a minute to taunt like the true heel he is. Seven, guys. Payne going to count it out? No, he wakes up just in time. What's this now? Ooh, double leg drop right to the nether region of Anderson. Not gonna feel too great. Might be feeling that in the morning. Ooh, beautiful. I think Payne was going for uh, maybe a sweep or a kick to the leg. Anderson had something else in mind, went for a beautiful drop kick. Now gonna target the legs of Zach Payne. Stomping the knee into the canvas, elbow to the ribs. And Payne, wake up my friend. Oh, good guy Anderson picks Payne up and then just stares at him, allowing Zach to capitalize. Blue Thunderbomb inbound. But hooking it for the pin. Yes, he is. Thinks that's it. Look at the arm race and everything. Only a two count, though. Barely a two count. He's putting those feet to use. Yeah, come on, Tim. Echo like the, the Yellow Ranger, right? Come on, Echo. You like you like that Yellow Ranger. When they made the Yellow Ranger the Asian chick. Rest in peace. Good times. Now up from behind comes Anderson for a nasty neck breaker. Jake Watson trying to tell the fans to, you know, don't worry about it. Payne's going to come back. Vintage Anderson scoop slam. Rebounds off the ropes. And there's the leg drop. Oops, the woozy Payne to a seat. Goes to Spinebuster. Countered by Payne into a... Brutal DDT, and now Zach has a finisher, I think. Tried to set Anderson up for the knee trembler. Oh, but here comes the kill, confirmed. Anderson's streak about to be put to rest, and he can't get out of this, and he can't withstand the pressure. No, it might have been a rope break, I think. Might have been a rope break. Good call by the referee. I didn't really see it, but uh-oh, Anderson might be out. Referee going to count it. One, two, only a two count, though. Last a couple of second. Anderson saves himself. You want to know something? Uh, some of you might call me gay, but my Power Rangers was Power Rangers in space. That was mine. That was my Power Rangers thing. Oh, no, actually, that wasn't it. That wasn't even it. Uh, it wasn't Power Rangers in space. What was it? Power Rangers SP, SPD or something, I think it was. Power Rangers, they were like a police force. That was the Power Rangers I watched. I barely even watched the original one. I watched like a couple episodes of it. Power Rangers SPD, I think it is. And another letter. I don't know. Pay now stalking. Ooh, Anderson for a pinpoint knee drop. Anderson struggling to get back to his feet here. Knee in the midsection. 
<laughs> Ninjetti. <laughs> Standing leg drop. Follow that up. And now Anderson maybe looking for that second spine buster. Maybe no. And what is this by Paul? Irish whip sends pain to the other side of the ring. And then a running a forearm smash right to the jaw. What a match between these two here on the main event and the main event as Payne once again goes for a springboard maneuver, goes for the knee. Payne not gonna be able to get it off though. What a back kick by Anderson. And there's the spine buster this time. He's gonna nail it. One, two, only two. And now it's Zach Payne who has to be careful. Watch out for that super kick that can come out of nowhere. That's literally the move. It's the super kick out of nowhere. That's the finisher name. Goes for a drop kick to the knee. Not going to pay off for roll, Zach Payne, boy. Here comes the Rolly Bird head scissors. Zach Payne doesn't know where he is at this point, guys. He's getting taken to town by Anderson. Anderson, unfortunately, out of stamina. He needs to work on that cardio when you're in the ring with someone like Zach Payne, especially. He's just going to stare at him. I thought he was just trolling us, waiting for the super kick. Uh-oh. Might be looking for a suicide maneuver of some sort. No! Back body drop sends Anderson all the way down to the outside of the ring. He leaps into the air for three, three. Referee starting to count. Irish whip. And Zach Payne might be looking to finish things off here. As he puts Paul back in the ring. What's, what's this? The zigzag! We haven't seen that in a while. That could be enough to finish Anderson off. One. Two, three, and it does. Zach Payne to put an end to Paul Anderson's undefeated streak since his return here after a great back and forth matchup in the main event of main event. Anderson got in trouble on the outside. Payne chucked him back in, immediately hit him with the zigzag to finish things off. There it is, zigzag. Puts the lights out for Paul Anderson. And it gets him the three count. You wanted him to face Payne Borton. Please chill. Here are your winners. Zach Payne and Jake Watson. I don't know if Jake Watson's the winner. He was the manager there. But Zach Payne got a great win for himself. Defeating Paul Anderson. Putting a stop to his momentum. Great matchup as Payne is going to celebrate. Getting himself some momentum for the gauntlet match this Sunday. Head over the limit. And thank you guys for joining me as always, dashing here. For community to respond, if you're new to the show, make sure you follow me. If you like what we saw, I stream every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. 2K16 coming out soon. WrestleMania, the third annual WrestleMania. Going to be next month, the season two finale, before we head on over to the new game. All the past episodes are on my YouTube channel, which is linked on my Twitch profile if you want to check those out. And as always, the website for the show is communityuniverse.forumotion.com. If you uh, want to check out the site, you know, get involved with the community. Maybe you have your own car created on the Xbox One. You're more than welcome to join Thank you guys, and I will see you tomorrow for the last stop for WrestleMania Over the Limit.